All right, here is your lesson about copyright. So before I get into what copyright actually is, I want you to think of this scenario. Say that you wanted to borrow a sweatshirt from a friend, but you didn't ask their permission first. Are you borrowing it? Or are you stealing it? I'm gonna guess most of you would say you were stealing the sweatshirt because if you were borrowing it, you would have gotten permission from your friend first. Now, if you asked for your friend's permission and your friend said no, but you took it anyways to wear, are you borrowing it or are you stealing it? I'm hoping most of you would still say you were stealing it because your friend said no. That's kind of a lot of what copyright is really all about. If you use somebody else's work without getting their permission, you are breaking the law and that law is called copyright law. So here's the definition. Most important thing is that copyright is a bundle of rights. Copyright's a good thing, All right? If you create something, you own copyright to that thing you created, as long as it exists somewhere, whether it be like in writing, on a videotape, in a sound recording, or somewhere in the computer. You have to prove that you actually created something, but you're the one that owns all the rights to it. So in simpler form, when you create something, you own the copyright. And owning copyright of something protects the creator so that others can't steal your work. Otherwise, they could get into some legal trouble. So here's an example. J.K. Rowling is the author of Harry Potter, all the Harry Potter books. So by writing that first book, she then copyrighted her book and all the characters in the book so that she has full control over what happens to those characters. She also had all of the following Harry Potter books copyrighted. And what that means is that somebody else can't just show up and write a Harry Potter book without her permission. So when you do own copyright, here's a list of all the things you have rights to. These are all the things you have control over for your work. Any sort of copies of the work. Any sort of performances of the work. Any sort of public displays of the work. And any sort of spin-offs of the work. So if I bring it back to J.K. Rowling, all right, we know that Harry Potter is a huge business. Okay, the, the Harry Potter people make money on a lot more than just the sales of their books. There's movies, there's amusement parks, there's merchandise. Every single time that somebody wants to create something based off of Harry Potter, they have to go to J.K. Rowling or J.K. Rowling's people and ask for permission. All right, she can decide if she wants to give permission or not give permission to these people. And also, she usually is going to ask to get paid anytime somebody uses Harry Potter's image. So for example, J.K. Rowling gets a small portion of every Harry Potter t-shirt that gets made. J.K. Rowling makes a little bit of money off of every single person that goes to the Harry Potter World Amusement Park, which makes sense. Without her, Harry Potter wouldn't exist. So here's a couple of television shows that you might be pop, may, might be familiar with. Girl Meets World and Fuller House. They're both based off of shows that were actually popular when I was your age called Boy Meets World and Full House. All right, these are called spinoffs and they just kind of carry it. It's a different show, but it's based off of an original show. So what are some copyright issues that you think had to be taken care of in order for Girl Meets World and Fuller House to be made? We're going to take a quick look at some other industries and other brands and talk about why we think copyright is important for them.
copyright is a big consideration in a lot of TV shows. All of these shows in particular have one thing in common, and it's that they're all based on some sort of either musical performance, dancing performance, and they all require music to be used. So in the box, I'd like for you to type in what you think has to be considered in order for these shows to be on TV. Streaming music and video websites pretty much exclusively deal with copyright. Different apps like Spotify, Netflix, YouTube, they all work a little bit differently, but they all have to get permission from the copyright owners of the things that they put up on their site. Apparel companies are another industry that have to be concerned about copyright. Whenever somebody creates a logo or an icon or um, a mascot or a design, it's copyrighted so that nobody else can take that exact design and sell it as their own idea. What about this? Is the performance of a copyrighted play in a middle school a violation of copyright? We know that Shrek the Musical is obviously copyrighted, but is it legal to perform in a school? How is it legal to perform in a school?